particular welcome this evening to Katie Baker. Katie is uh, here as uh, a member of Anglicare Australia, but in particular, she is here to tell us about the teacher program. You just say it as teacher. But, teacher. Uh, you'll, you'll tell us all about it in a moment. I will. I know. Katie is the, the, the lead teacher for the Southern region for this particular program and is going to share with us what the program is, how it works and uh, what they've been able to achieve. So without further ado, Katie, I will hand over to you and we look forward to what you've got to share with us. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. I'm wondering if I go viral on YouTube. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we'll Who see. Knows? Look, thank you everybody for having me. Uh, my name's Katie Baker and I'm currently in the role of a lead education specialist for the Teach Our program in the Eastern and Southern regions. Um, I've been in the leadership role managing seven ed specialists now for about two years. And prior to that, I was an education specialist in the Eastern region for three years, uh, working with primary and secondary uh, students, predominantly in the out of home care system. So prior to uh, this, I've worked in many education settings across the early childhood and primary education fields. Uh, and I've studied extensively in education and social work. Uh, and I'm currently working on my master's in child play therapy and boy, is that keeping me busy. Um, so look, reflecting on my time in education, I can you know, honestly say that working within the teacher program uh, over the last five years, is without a doubt um, been the most rewarding um, so far. Uh, it's such a privilege to work with in this particular cohort uh, of vulnerable students and to see you know, these students start to believe in themselves and achieve educational success. Um, it's an incredible journey to be a part of um, and you know, to watch unfold. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, what I thought I would do is just give you a little bit of an overview of the broader context of teacher before we sort of get into the nuts and bolts of um, what we do. So uh, last year, uh, even during the challenges of COVID, 82% uh, of students that um, uh, were involved with the teacher program maintained or improved their school attendance and many went from being disengaged to substantial or full attendance. Uh, there's been four evaluations of teacher involving more than 280 students in out-of-home care and the findings have been consistent. So significant improvements in school attendance, engagement in learning, literacy and numeracy outcomes um, and the DFFH Centre for Evaluation and research concluded that teacher is an effective program uh, and there's no other model like teacher within Victoria. Uh, there was a national review by the Centre for Nonprofit uh, Studies also found that no other evidence informed program in Australia employs uh, qualified teachers to improve educational outcomes for students in out of home care. Uh, so, you know, this model has been developed, tried, tested, uh, it's specifically for this out of home care cohort. Uh, we know it works um, and it's been subject to external reviews that show it's the only program with this kind of evidence and backing behind it in Australia. So I'm very proud of that. So what is TEACHER? Uh, as I was saying earlier, it's an acronym. We haven't spelt it wrong. I must say, when I go out to schools and I have to sign in um, at the front office and I write, I'm from the teacher program, I always have to say, I haven't spelt it wrong. It's an acronym um, because quite often I think they think we do spell it wrong. But yes, Transforming Education Achievement of Children at Risk. Um, the program was first established back in 2013. Uh, as a core funded pilot program with Anglicare. Uh, and the program was initially aimed at supporting students within out of home care. So over the past eight years, the program has grown significantly and we now offer intervention for all vulnerable students across Victoria. Um, 
within a range of service streams. So these include a fee for service um, stream. We also offer support through our Teacher CERC program, which is an acronym, Children in Residential Care. Uh, we also offer support through our development targets. Uh, they're used to help grow our program. Uh, the Teacher Keys program, which is Keep Embracing Your Success. Uh, and that's predominantly with residential care students. Uh, we also have block or DFFH funding, uh, and we have the Stephen Newton Scholarship, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later. So the teacher program is delivered by experienced teachers and is a highly specialised and tailored education support service, delivering a trauma-informed teaching approach. Why does teacher exists. So the first of all, the aim of teacher uh, is to address the educational learning gaps um, that students have. So the research tells us that students who are in out of home care are generally three to four times more likely to be performing below standard expectations than above in English and math. So students in out of home care are on average approximately 12 months behind academically. So we aim to support the students, first of all, with re-engaging into education, depending on where the student is at, uh, and then creatively working with our students to provide them uh, with English and math support um, in that one-on-one -on -one intensive teaching uh, approach, which all links back to the Victorian curriculum standards that are currently in place. So this is our teacher model. Um, the teacher model consists of a number of elements, as you can see there, but the most, the most important one or the critical one uh, is that in the middle, which is the importance of that teacher-student relationship. So that relationship um, you know, it is critical to the, I guess, the outcomes that the student has because we need to build that rapport and relationship up to, you know, be a trusting um, relationship that, you know, the student feels comfortable with and will engage um, with that teacher. So that is, you know, really important. Um, the teacher education specialists are all required to have and maintain full registration with the Victorian Institute of Teaching and on average uh, have 21 years of experience. That figure makes me feel old. I don't know if I like that, but I'll go with it. Um, so lots of experience, um, you know, within the teaching team. And we do have, I guess, older teachers and we have younger teachers as well. So it's a nice mix um, and we pride ourselves in making sure that we do keep up to date with, you know, the regular, um, the, the new um, research and that comes out and that we know, you know, we're keeping up with the digital age. Everything um, is a lot different um, as it was back when we went to school. Uh, but yeah, the whiz bang digital media stuff is quite impressive, but we try and keep up with, with all of those things. Um, so we also have a range of um, teachers that have additional qualifications, uh, special education, social work, counselling, mental health, play therapy and psychology. So most of our teachers have got tacked on to their teaching degree, some a specialty area um, that they bring with them. Uh, our teachers are extremely passionate and dedicated and they give their all to ensure their students achieve the best possible education outcomes. Um, we also work really closely with the Department of Education officials, uh, in particular the Lookout Education Support Centres. Um, they are the branch within the Education Department that oversees students in out of home care so we do work very closely with Lookout. Uh, we also work with the Koori Education Support Coordinators and Officers. Um, they oversee students who identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander students in out-of-home care. Also with our Health and Education Assessment Coordinators, uh, Student Engagement and Wellbeing Officers, um, and 
alternative education providers such as community schools, specialist independent schools uh, aimed at students um, with social emotional um, additional needs. So teacher employs teachers who specialise in understanding the out of home care education partnering commitment. So this is a really critical part of the role that we play. So the partnering commitment applies to all students in out of home care uh, and has mandatory elements, um, which our teacher education specialists assist schools with, um, you know, uh, meeting all those requirements, for instance, um, you know, individual education plans, regular SSGs, um, educational needs analysis. There's a number of things in that partnering agreement um, that schools do need to do and be actively involved in. Um, and quite often they, they're not aware of the, those until they do get a student that is um, in out of home care. Um, uh, and as one of our, uh, I must, I took this from one of the um, evaluation, um, the results. Um, it's a statement that says, put simply, teacher educators are the voice of out of home care in schools and the voice of education in out of home care teams. So we act as a bridge between um, those two um, and just make sure that we're collaborating and working together for best student outcomes. Um, so the teacher model is entirely young person centred, uh, delivering in a setting that most suits uh, the way the student um, works and where the student prefers to learn. Uh, and it's based on their needs, their goals, their culture and their aspirations, um, which can be all very varied. Okay, so we'll start exploring those elements around the circle that you saw earlier. So flexibility within the teacher program. We offer a blend of delivery types. So uh, we could offer online um, learning. Uh, we can offer in school learning, uh, in the residential care home. We can meet them in the park. We can meet them at the community centre, at a library. Um, so wherever they want to work with us and meet with us we are very flexible with that i must say one of the most popular places to meet is maccas um, if we need to start at maccas that's okay with us we'll meet there we don't stay we don't tell them we won't stay at maccas for every single session but you know to get them um, involved and in building rapport if that's what it takes that's what we'll do so yeah um we also offer a blend of enrolments. Uh, so we support students who are, uh, well, are involved with the Victorian schools, um, virtual schools, Victoria. Um, and as part of that program, they do need to be enrolled in a primary or a secondary school. So um, we can support that blended enrolment um, structure if need be. Um, and one of the most important things for us in terms of flexibility is that we offer interest-based hands-on learning. So it's very different to that mainstream sitting down in the classroom learning, um, very hands-on and based around what our students uh, like and want to learn about. So, you know, we, we'll offer cooking, um, um, we'll do activities such as planning a holiday, researching a keen interest online, uh, developing a resume. Um, we've had kids pull apart bikes and remodel them. Uh, and I think one of my most favourite um, activities I did with a student is they designed a, golf, a mini golf course and then we actually built it and it worked. It was a lot of fun. But, you know, the, the literacy and numeracy that is hidden in that you know, it's like we're, we're teaching these kids and they don't even realise they're learning. Um, so, you know, based around that student's keen interest in golf. Um, so that was, yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, so most importantly, the learning in these project-based um, uh, approaches all links back to uh, the young person's learning focus areas, again, linked to the Victorian curriculum in English, maths and personal and social capabilities. So the, the program is flexible. It needs to be flexible to work. Um, we need to meet the student where they're at uh, and 
um, you know, if we don't do that, then we find that students, they just don't engage. It's not meaningful for them. So flexibility is the key. Okay, highly uh, individualised is, um, we're highly individualised in that, you know, again, we're tailoring to what these students really, really need and what, what is appropriate for them. So, for example, we had a, a young uh, person who uh, had aspirations to be a paramedic. Uh, so we supported her to enrol in a first aid course. And she actually began volunteering with the local St. John's Ambulance. Um, and at the same time, the learning uh, and, the, and the act of you know, doing those things was all linked back to the strands and substrands in English and maths um, within the Victorian curriculum. Um, and you know, this is a, a real life example of a young person who we supported entering, th going through VCAL, uh, enrolling in a Cert 3 in non-emergency patient transport. Uh, and she has almost, almost completed her diploma of paramedical science. And she's hoping to go on uh, and do a bachelor degree of some sort. So yeah, that was a real success story. But again, you know, individualized learning to what was interesting and meaningful for that student. So a highly tailored to the young person's situation uh, and future, future aspirations. Uh, the way that we also approach our learning is that we use informed evidence-based comprehensive educational assessments. So uh, Compass, uh, we use uh, Compass is an assessment tool that we use, essential assessment or uh, progressive achievement test or PAT testing as we call it. So they're assessments that are uh, evidence-based uh, and by having a range of assessments, we can pick uh, which ones actually suit that uh, student's, I guess, style of interacting and learning. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important to make sure we work out exactly where a student is at, particularly if they haven't been uh, engaged in learning for a long time, sometimes that can be years, uh, and they have, you know, a big gap in their learning. We need to kind of work out where they are, and that's our base. That's where we start from. Uh, there's a, a highly focused one-on-one -on -one and engaging um, sessions. So a lot of young people really respond to a teacher who's able to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So it's not in that classroom setting. It's really really targeted in that one-on-one -on -one, um, scenario. So it also means that the approach can be adjusted to cater to that young person's needs. For example, um, quite often we'll incorporate brain breaks into um, uh, the teaching sessions. We'll use our teacher calm kits just to assist with emotion regulation uh, and just to keep that student calm. It might mean we're gonna go outside for some fresh air have a bit of a walk around and come back in. So it's very different to that uh, approach where they're in a classroom and they have to sit and, and you know do what it is they're told to do, really individualised, very flexible um, with the use of brain breaks and those sorts of breaks um, if needed. So teacher, the teacher program is and has a holistic approach. So our education specialists work closely with the young person's placement provider and carers, including strategies for learning at home. Our education specialists are active members of the care team, providing educational leadership and expertise. So we work across the education and care systems. Uh, we provide supports to the young person's education environment, so including, we work, uh, including working closely with schools, providing training and consultancy in classroom support as needed. Um, and we have a, a partnership approach, which, um, which I mentioned earlier with Lookout and with the uh, department officials. Um, we work with them alongside them to make sure that, you know, those key uh, elements of the partnership agreement are being met. Uh, and we also uh, align, if, if appropriate, with the uh, NDIS uh, and education needs assessments um, where they're needed. 
individual education plans and the key met were key members of the student support group. So their SSGs, uh, their student support groups, uh, they're held once a term. Uh, and again, that's part of the um, mandatory um, uh, elements of the partnering agreement, which I was talking about earlier. So it, it's a very, like I was saying, very holistic approach. There's um, consideration to, you know, the carers, the home environment, uh, the school uh, and the student. Um, and it, it's our role really is to make that all come together and work together and so make sure it's not they're not working in isolation. Quite often, like I was saying earlier, where uh, a, a student that's in out of home care starts at a school and the school hasn't had any experience working with uh, students in and out of home care, they need to be upskilled in what that means and uh, the different um, you know, elements of the partnering agreement. And there might be some behavioural concerns there where trauma is presenting in the classroom and those behaviours are difficult to manage. Uh, we can train them um, in, those, in, in managing those as well. Uh, this one's my favourite. Uh, teacher employs a trauma-informed uh, teaching approach. So uh, a significant focus of the program uh, and all staff are trained by the Australian Childhood Foundation and undergo regular refreshes and updates as part of continuing professional development. We really focus on safety for the young person uh, with consistency and predictability. Uh, at all times, we're working closely with a therapeutic specialist, case managers, placement staff to ensure our approach is consistent and informed by the latest assessments. Uh, the teacher approach uh, is very strength-based and they will focus on developing our growth mindset. This leads to feelings of success and students are able to develop a belief in their own personal capabilities and the realisation that they can overcome their adversities. A trauma-informed teaching approach means we can do things like work at the student's pace, structure, the physical environment uh, to minimise triggers. Uh, we can do exercises like breathing exercises to assist with that emotion regulation um, and whatever works for that student in terms of managing their emotions and staying regulated so they can keep learning um, in those sessions. Uh, teacher also provides professional development sessions to education professionals found um, around the trauma-informed teaching approach. So uh, in those sessions that we do provide, we cover topics um, such as understanding the neurobiology behind trauma responses, uh, the importance of understanding the functions of behaviour, uh, importance of identifying triggers, uh, and how to manage those difficult classroom behaviours. Uh, and that's the most common one. Teachers are so busy uh, and they've got 25 or more students in their classroom to manage. And, you know, our, our kids, unfortunately, do present with some difficult behaviours because they've had those traumatic experiences. So we can help assist with working out how to manage those and teaching teachers how to perhaps identify those triggers and preempt um, before things happen. Okay, so um, teacher offers targeted learning. So we use a highly targeted approach to learning. Um, the personal education plan that we develop uh, for each student ensures we get down to the fine detail of what the young person's needs are and target the learning accordingly. So the personal education plan is developed based on diagnostic assessments carried out by our education specialists. Uh, the data available from the school if they've got some testing and previous reports uh, and if appropriate, um, the young person's cultural plan. So the teacher, personal education plans developed by our education specialists. Uh, it's highly targeted, meaning the learning gaps are identified and teaching sessions include intensive 
tailored learning to catch up the student quickly and successfully. Uh, and of course, the personal education plan links directly back to uh, what we call the strands and substrands within the current Victorian curriculum. Uh, the PEPs also developed with the students input and where appropriate signed by the students. So there's a sense of, sort of autonomy and ownership around um, the learning. Uh, the PEP is then shared with the student support group, the care team. So everyone involved has a clear understanding of what the educational goals are uh, and what teacher, what the education special and specialist is going to do to help the student achieve those goals. Uh, and following uh, their personal education plan at the end of the term, we'll go on to review the, the PEP. Uh, and we might find that in creating the new PEP um, that we will include some consolidation of um, you know, those previous concepts and, and we might add some new learning goals in there as well. Um, but the, it's, it's highly targeted to suit that student. And we're able to pinpoint exactly what concepts and where the gaps are and I really focus on those areas um, to catch up that the student. So outcomes of targeted learning. So you can see in these graphs, um, on commencing with the teacher program in both literacy and numeracy, only 20 to 25% of students were performing at level or above. And after six to 12 months of targeted teaching, these figures rose to 48 and 53% of students performing at expected level or above. We also know uh, from reviewing the personal education plans that our students are catching up as well, even if they're still not at level, uh, we can see that they are progressing. We are closing the gap. Uh, and making progress in the right direction in those key learning areas. Uh, once they start to catch up to peers, their confidence grows and all of a sudden they can actually understand what the teacher's talking about in class and they can keep making those gains. And, and we've seen the same results over and over that young people can and do catch up when they get that targeted uh, learning one-on-one -on -one support. Uh, this, this graph uh, was taken from a previous teacher evaluation uh, and shows the results for a subset of young people, which is um, those, those students that were in residential care. So the graph represents engagement in learning. Uh, at entry to the teacher program, only 34% of our residential care cohort were usually or always engaged in education. Then after 12 months, this rose to 64%. But you can also see that the number who are always engaged became bigger and bigger. Uh, and so those who after six months became usually engaged by 12 months, more were always engaged. So it, the level of engagement increases. Um, we find particularly with residential care students that um, they're at a point where they've just totally disengaged and they're not connected to school at all. And it, it's really challenging at that point to get them back into learning um, because they've been out of education for quite some time. Uh, yeah, so this outcome is, a really significant, is really significant because it shows that we can engage the hardest young people in residential care in learning when they receive that one-on-one -on -one intensive targeted and tailored education support. Don't get me wrong, it is very, very challenging, um, but through consistency and our teachers showing up every week or every day, we, um, they get the gist that we're not going to go away and that they, you know, we're there to help them and we start to build their trust, build that rapport, hook in what we call a hook in to their uh, personal interests and then start to work with that in terms of uh, developing educational, I guess, um, activities and learning um, that is linked to their, their interests. Okay, so our impact 
Teacher now operates in all regions of Anglicare Victoria, supporting over 200 students each year. The statistics here really shine a light on not only how successful the teacher program is, but also how progressive we've been in moving into the remote learning space. So last year, our education specialists were plunged into having to adapt to teaching online pretty much overnight, uh, as were all schools in Victoria in this current pandemic. Uh, so teacher moves swiftly but confidently, adapting teaching using creative and engaging ways to keep students on track through remote teaching sessions. Um, and they were delivered on various online teaching platforms. Uh, something that was really interesting, um, we discovered that online learning actually really suited some of our older students. They didn't have those social um, difficulties and distractions that happen in an education setting, in the classroom, outside, and they actually preferred to work in that, you know, um, just, just themselves and have that communication with the teacher, I guess, one-on-one. -on -one. So that was really something that stood out for us with some of our older students. I remember one of the students said to me, oh, this is like a dream come true. I don't have to go to school, but I can still learn. Uh, and what we've been able to do as students, some of these students have gone back to the classroom. We've actually um, negotiated with some schools to maintain some online learning at home and some at school. So a bit of both, but yeah, that was something that we were yeah surprised at. Um, it was positive. Uh, a teacher remote learning strategy was developed, uh, which incorporated support for carers around the challenges of remote learning. Um, it, this included uh, delivery of hands-on education packs to homes to support uh, carers and to support students. We were also able to be a part of delivering these education packs to the students residing in the housing towers in Flemington. Um, who experienced really difficult lockdown conditions. So we quickly put together uh, education packs uh, and we know that they were actually delivered to, um, to those students. So that was positive, but we had some good feedback from our students around um, those education packs. And um, they had a few other bits and pieces of goodies in them, in them as well for, for the students. But um, yeah, that was a fun, fun time delivering those. Uh, we're also able to use our brokerage funds to purchase necessary IT equipment uh, required to connect online. Uh, and, you know, that ensured that all of our students, 100% of our students could continue to access education. Um, so that was, that was a good, good one as well. All right. Um, some of you might recognise this person, Stephen Newton. Um, so each year uh, there are chairpersons awards at Anglicare Victoria. Um, and in 2021, so last year, there were 58 nominees across seven categories uh, in the chairpersons awards. Um, sorry, I've just lost my spot. Okay, so here we can see um, Stephen Newton, our former chairperson, um, and he is um, giving this student here, uh, he, he won the Educational Achievement Award. And um, this young man was residing in residential care. He hadn't been attending school for over 12 months. Uh, and with teacher intervention, he was able to re-engage in school with a modified um, timetable three days a week and began to engage in his literacy and numeracy learning. You know, when I say it, it doesn't sound much, but for him, it was it was huge. Um, and he was so proud of receiving that award. Um, I think yeah, the whole of Victoria heard about that award after he um, got home. So it was really lovely, but it's, um, it's nice to have these students receive awards like this if, if you think about their previous experience with education, they haven't received certificates before. They haven't felt that achievement. 
um, and their experience of education hasn't been positive. So, you know, when you see these kids beaming and they're receiving certificates and you're saying well done to them, just that that smile on their face, it's, yes, it's, it's lovely to see. Um, it's one of my favourite parts, I think. Uh, so, um, also at this event, uh, we announced the Year 12 recipients um, of the Stephen Newton Education Scholarship. Uh, and that's a $2,000 scholarship that our year 12 students can spend on education. Uh, and that's coming really handy. Uh, I oversee four students uh, in the East that receive that award. And um, they've bought a range of things linked to education. I've got one doing an apprenticeship uh, and he's able, he's been able to buy a lot of out work gear, shoes and things like that. Uh, can be spent in any way um, they need to spend it, as long as that's linking to education. Um, so the Chairpersons Awards are coming up in a few weeks and this year we're hoping still it will be held face to face. It's actually held at the MCG uh, Members um, Lounge. So we're fingers crossed that we can continue um, with that in that face to face. Um, and our uh, teachers are currently working on nominations and um, developing and submitting um, submitting their responses in and putting forward students for that. So that'll be an exciting night to see um, see some of our students there receiving awards. And I thought I would share with you some of the feedback that we've received um, from. Uh, you know, other professionals and uh, students. Um, and it's nice to get this feedback. Sometimes you get a little bit disheartened because it can be really hard work and some days are really tough and it's not often that you do get that, you know, that feedback that, um, you know, it's nice to get. So um, this particular person um, I worked with very closely, principal practitioner with DFFH, um, and he says the education specialist joined the care team with such a positive approach and has believed in the young person, supported her and has always held hope for her from day one. Um, Ed specialist has changed the family narrative, na narrative and is excelling. Um, and these student ones, um, they're my favourite. So I wasn't going to come to school, but I came because it's your day today and you make all this stuff better for me. So I did, I came. Uh, at first I didn't want to engage and I thought that doing year 10 was pointless. I've been studying all year and thanks to Tanya, my education specialist, I'm able, uh, I'm so close to completing year 10. And that young person actually went on, she got her year 10 pass and she went on to do a certificate in animal studies. Um, and I haven't had an update her about um, from her recently, but um, yeah, she was thrilled to be working in the area of animal studies. Um, and this one's my favorite. Uh, I'm glad I did join the teacher program because it saved me. It completely saved me. I couldn't even write the word the when they started coming. And now I know words like hypothesis. Um, and he was a bit of a character, this one. So that's my favourite, definitely. Um, and I think that brings us to the conclusion of what I've got to say. Um, I might hand back to you, Jeffrey. Um, we might do some questions, yeah? All oh, right, thank you. But you certainly covered a lot of uh, areas there and told us a lot about the program. Um, just as people start to think about questions, uh, perhaps you cut, touched on it, Katie, but um, something I wasn't uh, clear about is how would a student become engaged with the program in the first place? What's the, the normal course of events that would actually lead to ah. a student becoming part of the program? <laughs> That's a really good question. Yes. So we take a uh, teacher takes referrals from a range of sources. Uh, they can come uh, from uh, GFFH Child Protection. They can come from a school. Uh, they can come from um, Lookout. 
self-referral uh, other programs within Anglicare or within other community service organisations can refer. So the process would be is that they would contact us uh, via the teacher email or call up and then we would send out our referral documents and intake documents and that's where we we start the process. Um, is, is that what you were referring to? Yes, yes, yes. It's, uh, so that it, it, it might actually be triggered by the school or by a person themselves if they felt that there was something there that they might want to tune into. That's right, yes, yes. Uh, a lot of our uh, referrals come from the case managers within Anglicare who manage students in our heart of home care. So uh, kinship care, home-based care and residential care, if they identify um, that that intensive support is needed, that's when they would take action and put through a referral to the teacher program. And depending on um, what region and what funding is available, they might have to explore the fee-for-service option and that's where they might go back to the care team and say, this is what we really need. How are we going to fund this? Who, who, who can we ask? Um, and that's when the DFFH child protection worker might say, we can have a look into that. We can support that um, and, and go down that, that path of funding uh, look out to um, forward with funding. Um, I do wish we had more what we call block funding um, because that way we don't have to worry about seeking that funding. We can just get straight into uh, action and start supporting um, that student. But that's the process of beginning intervention with teacher. Thank you. Glennis, did you have a yeah. question? Thank you. I've got a couple. I hope that's all right. Um, oh. And my sound was going in and out a bit. So I, I hope you haven't answered these and I'm asking questions. Yeah, so if I can't already answer them again. <laughs> the average age of your students, the uh, length of time they're likely to be in the program. And uh, do you do your teachers always meet them on a one to one basis? So there's no other adult there? So just so, those questions, please. Could we go from the first one? I've forgotten the first one already, Glenn. First one, so, the average age of your students, are they all teenagers? Uh, okay, so we support students from foundation, so five years old through to 18 years old. In right. saying that, um, we've got some students in our CERC, so children in residential care, in our CERC program who have actually turned 19 and we can remain engaged with them um, until their period of intervention, which is either four, six or eight months is up. So the answer to your question is five years through to 18, 19 years. Thank you. And you also said it's about six to eight months they're likely to be engaged in the program. So in our CERC program, yes, um, they'll get a minimum of four months support and then we review and depending on the wait list for the CERC program, we can continue on for an additional two months and then we review again and we can keep going for another two months. Now, CERC, the CERC program is, uh, is funded by, uh, we, we would put a submission in and we were eight, we were uh, successful in um, gaining funding for that program. That's why we can do that. But in our fee-for-service stream, we deliver what we call our test packages. So tailored education support package. And one of those packages goes for the length of a term, usually 10 or 11 weeks. And the, every week we meet with that student for a, a, at least the length of two hours. So we might have two sessions a week for one hour each, or we might do a two hour session, depending on what is best suited to the student, for the younger students, uh, it's better to have those two blocks of an hour, because even an hour can be a long time for young students. So uh, it is definitely one-on-one -on -one, um, support. And that I, I think that's what makes it so successful because the teacher is able to work one-on-one -on -one and work intensively on that student's 
deficits and their gaps in education. Um, so yeah. I think I've answered all of your questions. There. Yes, yes. The one to one, um, if somebody's a youngster, do their parents oh. or, or the uh, care people drop them off and then come back for them or something like that? Or if you mean, so we'll, yeah, we'll go, we'll go to wherever they are. A lot of our younger students we see at their in their school. So they would be engaged in school, but their learning gaps would be quite big. So we go into the school, we organise when, with the school, what's the best time to come and see that student one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and then we meet them at school. Sometimes we might meet them at their home. So we'll organise with a carer, what's the best time to come after school. Uh, or if they're an older student, uh, we can work out whether they will actually go into the residential care home or whether they want to meet at the park, cafe, uh, library, wherever that might be. Uh, but depending on their situation, generally we do try and have other adults in the vicinity. So in a school, obviously that happens in the home, um, that happens sometimes, you know, when we're out in public, um, it's not too much of a problem, but uh, we do try and make sure that we're within earshot of someone else. Um, yeah. But it, it's definitely one-on-one, -on -one, delivered one-on-one, -on -one, yes. That's excellent. An excellent program, I think. Thank you. Oh, I think it is too, Glenna. Yeah. <laughs> we agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, I've seen it develop um, over the period of eight years. I, I just can't believe how much change can happen in that space of time. So, for instance, when I first joined Teacher we didn't really have much paperwork. We didn't even do a personalised education plan. We knew what we were doing, but we didn't record it like we do now. And I think we, we've developed that for, uh, I guess, for the, the purposes of data collection, which feeds into funding and, and also proving that the program actually works. But we've started the process of refining our documents now and improving them and fine tuning them. Um, so I've enjoyed watching that and being a part of that and you know seeing that unfold. Katie, is there a similar program in other states? No, there's not. Um, I quite often say to the teacher team, we're going global. We are going global, that is my goal. So we're starting small, we're only in Victoria. We have been contacted by uh, some community service organisations in the Northern Territory that have heard about Teacher and have been interested in the model uh, and have asked us about that. Uh, but in terms of moving into other states, I don't, I don't know that yeah, we're not quite there yet, but I sense it's on the horizon and I'd really like to see that happen. Uh, but yeah, it's just Victoria at this point with Anglicare. Just it's just with the Anglicare Victoria um, in Victoria. Katie, uh, thank you very much for all your information. You may be interested that my little dog has just qualified to become a story dog. <gasps> oh. Go into all the schools, yes. well, not all the schools, uh, just a local school. Um, I was thrilled to bits. Uh, he's a French poodle, and I thought, oh no, he might be a little bit uh, sort of neurotic. But no, he he passed the test, so we're going yep. into the school now to oh, hear him read. <laughs> lovely. So so part of that is that you actually are with your little dog, and you listen to it, so the students read to your dog. Is that how yes. it works? Yes. I love that, yeah. and the students would love that. You know seeing animal an animal in a school it's their kids are just drawn to that they love you know that animal um experience I know we've got a couple of uh, therapeutic dogs in our residential care units uh, and it's it's incredible the difference that it can make and even you know that talking point when you meet a student it just it's just a calming thing I think that mm. you know Everyone loves animals and dogs, so oh, that's well, the, yeah. The nice dogs to not, hear. They're not dogs not going to laugh at them making a mistake. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice to hear, Carolyn. Thank you. Okay, Katie. Thanks, Pat. Did you have a comment? Yes. Are the students withdrawn from their normal classes if it's in a school? 
Uh, yes, they are. If that's the most appropriate approach, we don't want to be taking them out of learning because that defeats the purpose of, you know, uh, delivering what we do if they're actually missing out on classroom time. So we need to be really careful around how that looks. So for instance, in a primary school, generally the first two hours of the day is the literacy block. That's what we call it. And then generally after um, playtime, recess, that it would be maths time. So we try, we try to go at the end mid to end of the day when there might be things on like uh, PE or those sorts of activities that we can afford to have a break from to catch up on those core subjects like literacy and, and numeracy. Uh, sometimes depending on what the goals are too and sometimes we get students that need real intensive work around emotion regulation and so we'll implement um, an emotion regulation program to the whole class and that way the whole class can start to use the program and uh, even though it's aimed at that one student and we're also mentoring to the teacher in the classroom as well so they're we're modelling, they're learning from us, and then for the remainder of the week, they'd continue to do what you know, whatever we had delivered in the classroom. But that's a good question, and we're really careful not to um, remove them from learning to, yeah, to teach. It's, it doesn't cause any resentments that the, uh, they're draw, withdrawn? Sometimes, and we need to manage that. Uh, so, that is a conversation that we'll have with the teachers, with the carer, and most importantly, with the students. So that generally happens in secondary school. For instance, I was working with a secondary, a, a young man in secondary, and he didn't really want anyone to know that, you know, he was receiving additional support. So I made a plan with him uh, when I would see him at the end of um, recess. So he knew at the end of recess on a Tuesday, that he would go into the room that we would meet in. He'd just go in there and then I would come in and I would meet him in there. No one, he wasn't actually withdrawn. He wasn't going into a classroom to be withdrawn. It was just the end of recess and he was going off to do that with me. Uh, and then he would go back after that. Um, and we sort of sometimes will arrive at a school and we might say to reception, oh, you know, we're here to work with Joe Bloggs and, and, the reception lady goes to get on the PA and call out the student's name and oh no don't do that uh, so just those little things that we need to be really in tune with um, to make it you know successful so yeah good question Pat thank you thank you well you can see Katie that there's a, a lot of interest in the program that you've talked about and uh, the, the questions have indicated the, the level of engagement that people have had with, uh, with you and, and uh, with the program that you've been talking about. So on behalf of the Order of Australia Association, thank you very much. We wish you well as you continue the program, uh, not thank just you. you, but all of those with whom you work. And, yeah, uh, thank you, Geoffrey. It's certainly something that uh, uh, oh, thank we'd you. I'd like to now be able to talk about that Check in that. our newsletter. So, yeah, people are showing their appreciation. So, uh, thank, thank you all. Thank you very much. much for having me. Thank you.